the BMW M550i X Drive. Probably the most underrated saloon out there. Why do I say that? That's what we're gonna find out next. The current generation 5 Series came out back in 2016. That's a while back. It received some major facelifts on the outside, the inside, like BMW does usually, which means this thing is due for a full update. And I do believe BMW is working on the next generation 5 Series. And if you are absolutely greedy on getting the latest tech or the latest car, well, you might wanna wait because the changes might be very different to this model. If you're in the market for a performance saloon and you don't want to go all the way to the top trim, well, there are two competitors, biggest competitors to this model. You got the Mercedes E53 AMG or the Audi S6. The difference is that the Audi S6 uses a V6, meanwhile, the Mercedes is an inline six, which means this thing over here, it's the winner. Why? Because this uses a V8 twin turbo 4.4 liter. And this thing makes 523 brake horsepower, which means this is probably the best option. The next thing we wanna do is address the elephant in the room. Why buy this when you can get the M5? Like what makes this better than the M5? Well, the first thing you need to know is that the M5 technically shares a similar engine to this, but it has a better chassis, better suspension system, better brakes, of course, better tires, a lot of things that you don't get in this. That's where the M5 wins. But also the pricing. You see, this in Canada starts at $90,000. Meanwhile, the M5 starts at $125,000. That's a massive gap between these two. It's not that it was like $10,000 or $15,000. In the US, for example, this starts at $80,000. Meanwhile, the M5 starts at one hundred seven, dollars which again, it's very far between the two. But that doesn't mean that this is not a good car and you should overlook this. In fact, this will do zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. The M5 does it in 3.3. That means they're not too far off in terms of performance, but then you take them to a track, that's a different story. If you know BMW, you understand the first letter of the engine code. The N stands for the detuned version of the engine, while the S is more of the powerful, the beastly one. In this case, we have the N63. Meanwhile, the M5 gets the S63. This is a 4.4 liter V8 twin turbo, and the turbochargers are right in the middle. I believe this is the first engine to ever use the turbochargers right in the middle. It makes 523 brake horsepower and 500 and 53 pound feet of torque. BMW says that this will do 0 to 60 in about 3.8 seconds, but sides online have proven to that this thing can get from 0 to 60 in 3.6. And to be honest, I think that 523 brake horsepower, that to me seems more like to the wheels. It is equipped with an eight speed automatic transmission. And most importantly, this is an X drive, which also means you can tune this engine to make a lot more horsepower. And it does have a quad exhaust tip in the back to make it look a bit more M5. The good news is that because this one has been in the market since 2016, well, guess what? You can purchase a slightly used one. In fact, last night I was looking up models from 2019 and 2020, and in Canada, you can purchase one for like $80,000, which means you're saving about $25,000 more in comparison to buying this new. But you're probably by asking, why would I buy this when I can get it used? Well, you get a facelift option. It looks more aggressive. But if you're looking for the price, this thing starts in Canada about $90,000. With the package that this offers, it goes up to 110. And the most expensive item in the list is actually the paint because it is an individual paint that costs $4,900 Canadian, which would be about $3,700 USD. This is the deep frozen metallic gray. And to me, it looks more like a matte black than it looks gray, but that's maybe because I need glasses most of the time. But let me give you a quick tour what this offers. And let's start first with the front end. Now let's talk about the exterior design. First of all, this comes with the M Pro package, which is about $1,200 Canadian, about 800 USD. Here's what you get. Headlight, shadow line. Look at this aggressive headlights. Move on to the bottom. We have blacked out parts, this part over here, then the grill. Again, the grill blacked out completely. The difference is you don't get those flaps that open up to get the air through, but you get it down here. And then move on to the emblem. This is the BMW M 
50 years anniversary amulet. It's about $300 package. Then we'll move to the side. Again, similar design over here. The wheels, 20 inch Pirelli tires, low profile, staggered. That means the front one are not as wide as the rear. Now, in comparison to the BMW M5, this uses four pistons, red calipers. This is a custom paint, of course. And then the actual rim uses this logo in the center, which again is part of that $300 package that you buy. And you have the M logo onto the actual wheel. Then we'll move on to the sides. Now, unlike the M5, which uses that beautiful vent that goes through for air, and it's, a, of course, part of the M5 package, this doesn't have that, but it has this little M logo. And then you have the vents over here, which, by the way, it is functional. The air goes through from here into that side. And the next thing I love about this is this line that you see that starts from the fender all the way to the back. That is very, very distinguished compared to the standard 5 Series. Now, the mirrors don't get the same love as, let's say, the BMW X340i, which has that M style mirror. This is just like standard. Now, let's go into the back and let me show you what it offers because this is where I really love the rear end of this car. The wheels 275 are here for the tires, 245 in the front. And then we jump into the side, we got the tail lights. I love these tail lights. These are the updated version. As you can see, look at this red style, so aggressive, blacked out as well, love that. And then we have this thin spoiler at the back, which I'm sure you can upgrade to some sort of like carbon fiber to give you more downforce, although this is an X drive, so you might not need a lot of downforce. And then we get into the middle emblem over here. Again, that $300 package, you get it all the way around. And then you have the badge over here, it says M. 550i but then if you want to feel better about yourself you can just do that and now you have yourself an m5 i wouldn't suggest you to do that i'm sure some people do that now let's go to the bottom because this is where things get quite interesting we got the diffuser very aggressive beautiful design now these are quad exhaust tips but i believe from the back side here you only have one so the tips are quad but the exhaust itself the pipe coming from the back over here it's only a single but that doesn't matter. What matters is how it sounds. So take a listen. jump into the second row first of all i'm 6'2 so i'm taller than the average individual and if you're thinking about space the 5 series is almost perfect why do i say that but look at the leg room space here i can easily be as a passenger in the second row in a long trip of like five hours no problem head room we got this beautiful switches at the top we got a climbing unit at the bottom and has heated seats for both sides two usb-c ports this part over here, you can put your cup holders. Look at that. You can put your cups in here, your cup of coffee, going on a long trip, nice and comfortable. Beautiful visibility. We got this beautiful uh, shadows on this side. What are they called again, sorry? Um, shades, side shades. Yes, my brain froze. Anyways, back to this. The side shades, so you can raise them manually and lower them. They don't have an automatic like a 7 Series, but again, they do the job. But look at the leg room, how comfortable it is. And by the way, the beautiful interior lighting on this thing is chef's kiss. Absolutely love what they've done. You got so much headroom here, the way it's designed. The beautiful suede liners at the top, the pillars as well. You can't go wrong with this thing. On the driver's side, you get welcomed by a lot of uh, tech features, a lot of designs. Like, look at this, for example. We have the M550 logo, which, by the way, lights up at night. Even right now, that is not really dark. And then the seats. Absolutely love these seats. You see, you can adjust so much. And by the way, they're massage seats. You have the button located onto this side here, the door panel, where you can adjust. They got three levels. And you can change it to as many as different modes as you want. And then we got the control unit here for the actual sunroof and most importantly for the windows. You got two memory seats. It has this beautiful wood trim and the thin line for the lighting. But I want to go into the details for the seats over here because this is where things get quite interesting. You can adjust half of the actual recliner from here so that you have the headrest closer to your head. And then, of course, you can adjust the bolsters as well. You can adjust the leg extension. These seats are made for long trips. Absolutely love them. 
The good news is that this model is not totally outdated. What I mean with that? Well, it does have the latest tech features. You got a beautiful infotainment display, which it is touch screen, and we got a center control unit that you can control it. It has the latest tech features. You got wireless charging pad as well, heated seats, ventilated seats, all the good things that you'll find in the latest BMW. The difference is that this has not received the new generation iDrive, which I believe the 2024 model that BMW is working on will receive it. But it does have a digital cluster, very similar to the current 3 Series, not the 2023 model. And then with this package, you also get a sunroof, which is only halfway. It's not a full panoramic roof. We got a wireless charging pad in the center. The actual infotainment display has the latest tech features from 360 camera, parking assist as well. This also has the driver assist package with traffic jam, lane assist, gap assist as well. It will hold you within lanes. I'll show you when I go for a test drive. But in terms of tech features, it remains very much the same as the 2020 model, not very different on the interior. Although this does have the latest, I believe, infotainment software in comparison to the previous like 2018 2017 model but the interior design overall has remained pretty much the same we have the wood trim with this package beautiful interior lighting which at night this thing looks amazing but if you're patient you might want to wait for the 2024 model because that might be very very different to this i believe it will be the curved display that they're using in the three series where you have the cluster in one side and then the infotainment display on this side there's going to be probably less buttons in the center which i absolutely love on this one because the climate unit for example has buttons you have touch screen buttons for the heated seats the uh, actual fan speed as well and there is a little screen over here shows you the temperature and so on but in the new one that might go away because the current 3 series doesn't have any of that there's only a few buttons and then you have that massive curved display for the infotainment This uses a V8 twin turbo, making 523 brake horsepower and close to 550 on pound feet of torque. It's an X drive, uses an eight speed automatic transmission with sport mode transmission. You can shift into manual, sport, or even standard. The beautiful thing is that unlike its competitors, like the Audi S6 and Mercedes E53, which are technically the middle trim on the five series, for example, or in the uh, E-Class, this uses a V8. The rest of them use a smaller engine, which makes this a very competitive vehicle. I've had this for a week, and here's what I love about this thing. First of all, the fuel efficiency out of a V8, it's mind-blowing. In fact, I can get on a full tank about 600 kilometers. Yeah, that is insane for a car like this. Now, of course, you have to get premium. It is such a good day-to-day -day car so comfortable right now i have it in comfort mode it's quiet inside it's comfortable it's enjoyable i have the massage seat on cooling seat is on it is boiling outside we're looking at 30 degrees celsius not sure what the fahrenheit conversion would be at this point but that is something that you gotta appreciate about this vehicle it's not just about power yes it's quick in fact this will do 0 to 6 in about 3.6 3.7 seconds bmw says 3.9 but i wouldn't take that too seriously in my opinion space wise in the front in the second row in the boot you got so much that you can play around with this thing it's the perfect daily and the best part about it's also the price this with all the packages i believe is about 110 or so which is actually not that bad price yes that Exterior paint is like $4,900 Canadian, but you don't need that, in my opinion. Just a standard color. I'm not a big fan of this one. I'll definitely pick something else, more like a burgundy style, something that, you know, it's a bit different and it's a looker. This, on the other hand, is like too black for me, too matte black. It just, the car completely disappears, the lines completely disappear. The exhaust sound is good. It sounds like a V8. It's not obnoxious, it's just enjoyable. Like this thing, you put it into Sport Plus, transmission into Sport as well. You downshift M3 and... Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. This car, it can do everything. It's a car for everything. 
You want winter time, X Drive is there. You want comfort, everything is there. It has literally the latest tech features you would need in a car. Although this hasn't received the, the, the latest gen, but it's still, in my opinion, very, very good. You got pretty much everything. There's so many tech features on the infotainment display that would need me hours to go through. I'm a big fan of this car and I am very happy that I got to drive it for a full week to really experience. In fact, I have a Levante Moderna, Moderna S, Modena, I would say in Italian, S, uh, that I have this week. Out of the two, I enjoy this more than the Maserati in some ways, although the Maserati does sound pretty good for that V8 um, under the hood. It's, it's actually pretty good. But I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. I'm a really big fan of this. I, I, I like this thing. I like how good it is. And one thing that makes it harder as well is picking between this or an M3 because the price is almost the same. Yet this is so much better in some ways. Yes, an M3, it's an M3. I understand that. This in my books is, is a little bit better. You got the space, you got the comfort, the luxury. It's there. It's so comfortable on the road. I couldn't explain it to you through the video. You'd actually have to sit in here to, to experience the comfort level, level of this car. Now, things that I don't like about this, the mirrors. That's one thing that I mentioned previously. I wish it had M mirrors in some ways because I think it'd look a bit more sexy, but I'm sure you can purchase them. Well, let's just say aftermarket. There's gonna be another gen coming out soon. So that is something that makes it even harder to pick this one because we don't know how the next one is gonna be. Is it gonna be faster? Is it gonna be more powerful? Is it gonna be better? Is it gonna be cheaper? Is it gonna be more, I'm assuming, probably. So if you're in the market for one, you're probably going to wait a little bit, I think, in my books, because you can also pick these things to use for so little. In fact, I was able to get them for like 70 grand. That's a lot of car for the money. A lot of car for the money. That is, it's absolutely unbeatable, that price, if you're looking. Now, you're always gonna have the comments, I'm sure you guys are already typing in, well, Sam, it's gonna break down, it's gonna be at the dealer all the time. Definitely wanna look for some sort of warranty because unfortunately, these cars are not, well, let's just say, they're not the most reliable cars because the way they're treated by the owners. You see, these cars are not unreliable because they are BMWs. It's because people that buy them do not treat them properly do not take care of them, do not bring them to the dealer, they cheap out on parts, and they expect these cars to last. They don't last because of that. If you take care of them, they will last. That I can guarantee you because if you take care of a car, you do the service on time, whatever the manufacturer recommends or that you should do, you will have a comfortable, enjoyable, and reliable car. But if you just ignore oil changes, taking care of the little things that they need, you're not gonna have these, that, this car for so long. So it's not necessarily the car. I, I hear this all the time. Oh my God, they're gonna break down. It's not gonna break down. I, I mean, my dad has a Mercedes E-Class with 700,000 kilometers. Think about that for a moment. So for me, it's, it's nothing to do with the vehicle itself. These cars are, have a lot of tech features. This is not a Toyota Corolla. So don't expect this to behave like a Corolla. This is a car that has many, many features, many things added to it to make it as comfortable as possible. And even the oil change, of course, this takes more oil than a smaller engine. That's not rocket science, like you'd know that. The tires need a uh, proper change to the brakes. It needs proper control by a proper certified BMW dealer that can do that to make sure he checks everything is right. And if you get a 2020 model, you're still under the warranty. I would get one as my daily, no question, because I think it's just, it does the job well. It does the job very well. Um, it is very fuel efficient. I was getting about 11 kilometers per, 11 liters per 100 kilometers, which is actually quite reasonable for a car like this. You'd expect this to be a super guzzler, but it's not. In fact, I'm getting better fuel efficiency from this than I did from my Lexus IS 500 V8 naturally aspirated five liter. So that just tells you. And the beautiful thing is that you got the power anytime you want and it's quick. Oh, the bolsters adjust. I am set to race. And here we go. It just, just goes and the transmission on a roll 
it finds the right gear when you have it in sport mode, which I love it even more. I like this thing. I like this thing.